Good evening, everybody. This is Larita Barrett for the Institute for Global Transformation. On, uh, I think it's the 17th of January, um, the day of the full moon in Capricorn. Very powerful day it is. Um, and we hope that you've worked with these energies. Uh, as the full moon was uh, about 6.50 or so, um, Eastern Standard Time, PM, today. Today I will be talking about mental polarization. I'll be going into mental polarization with a little bit more depth than before, hopefully, for everyone. We have been talking about mental polarization for about the past four months. We have been working in, in, in our meditative state with um, uh, some meditations that help to shift our polarization, shift where we live. As we've said before, Humanity, for the most part, is in the process of a major shift. Humanity is shifting from an emotional polarization into a mental polarization. It is only a part of what it is we're seeing in the outpicturing or being outpictured in our world today um, as our planet undergoes a major initiation. And we've asked the question before, where do you live in your being? Where do you hang out the most? And we've ideally taken time to sense where are we you know some of us hang out different places in our being you know some of us are in the mind some of us are in our throat center some of us are in our heart center may a good many of us are in our solar plexus um so the question is to take the time to find out where am I, where am I hanging out? Because once we recognize it, once we know it, then guess what? That gives us power over it. That gives us the power to change, okay? So let's talk about this a little bit more since it is up for humanity in such a large scale. And as I mentioned, there's a big difference between emotional polarization and mental polarization. Emotional polarization means that we're always in a tug of war with others. My way, no my way, my way, no I'm right, no you're wrong. It's it's always that, where well, I call it a solar plexus focus really, it's always that tug of war that's going on and um, which does not lend itself to harmonious relationships. So, that's an emotional polarization. It's the knee-jerk reactions. It's the right, wrong, good, bad. It's the fear. It's uh, the victim feeling victimized. It's there are so many different things that are distinctive about a, a person who is polarized emotionally. They may be aspirational. 
but lack the will to create change. They may be um, as I said, feeling like they're victims, they're always being dumped on, or um, nothing right ever happens to me, kind of situations. And as a result of that, they are always in reaction in their world and in their environment. Um, they're unhappy. And taking the time to find out where one is polarized helps to shift that. It will shift you, not helps to shift, it will shift you as long as you have the will to make the change. And that's part of what we're going to be talking about too. Humanity has long lived within the realm of emotional polarization. Um, and we see the outcomes of that in every strata of our life, in education, in religion, in racial disharmony, in discrimination, same thing in the economic system, um, in the political system. Okay, we see it in government. So it, and the clanging, that loud clanging noise that we're hearing everywhere in our world today is basically that aspect of humanity react in reaction, as I've said before. Because humanity hates change. <laughs> and it is being forced to change, whether it likes it or not. Newton's, Newton's law of motion that Basically, change will not occur and cannot occur until something bigger comes to offset it, to shift it, to force it to move. Change refuses to happen. Okay, So that's what's happening right now. As the soul of humanity seeks to impress itself and is impressing itself. It's precipitating down and it's causing a major ruckus um, on all different levels and departments, categories of our life. So we're maturing and undergoing a shift to mental awareness. And in doing so, it's important that our foundation be grounded in spirituality. Because a mental focus without a spiritual foundation creates a dictatorship. And an emotional focus without a spiritual foundation creates fanaticism. So we have to be careful always on all fronts. So the question is, I ask that you check in with yourself to find out where you, what are your hopes and feelings? What are your desires, hopes, feelings, and desires. And I ask that question for one basic reason, to determine, for you to determine and look at. This is part of 
having power over something because we recognize what it is, we can name it, we can call it by its name. And as a result, we can change things. What are, what are the things you primarily wish for yourself? Okay. What is it you seek? What are your hopes, your feelings and your desires? One, is it more so for self? Two, is it focused on others? Or three, is it for the good of the many? Those are three basic categories. This pandemic that we're still in has really taught us, as I've said before many times, it's taught us that we are a we. We are not an I. We are a group. We are a soul group. We are a collective, interdependent and interconnected with each other. And together we stand stronger than we are individually. Our world, we're learning as a result of this pandemic, is not limited to our address, our apartment or flat, or our nuclear family. It's not limited to just that. Our world is really everyone because There is no other, it's only we, it's only us. And each one is a representative for all. So, and within that, there is no separation as a result, okay? Um, as I've said before, we are our brother's keeper. We are stewards of this land, guardians of this land. And we are guardians and protectors and providers for each other. We are a fraternity, a sisterhood and brotherhood, regardless of race, of religion, of social status, of location, of gender or lack. We are a one. And it is extremely important that we understand, and I've said this before, a lot of echoing today, that we are not alone and that we are loved. What happens in Greece has effect on us here in the United States, in Canada, South America, everywhere. It ricochets. There's no separation at all. And a war that breaks out in one part of the world has effect on the entire world. We cannot close ourselves down cannot think that, oh, that has no effect on me or doesn't involve me because it's happening over there. 
that separatist thinking that blocks, that separates, that divides. No. <laughs> that what happens, and we've seen that already in this pandemic, have we not? What happens over there will cascade over here at some point in time. Our care and concern and our ability to contribute our energies for the betterment of the whole of all who are suffering will keep that from happening one will create a brotherhood a network of brotherhood working together for the betterment of all Another thing that humanity is finding through this pandemic, and it's just the times, that small groups of people working together can affect greater change than sitting on our duffs on the sofa and waiting for a politician to do it. Small groups of people are working together the way of council is what it's called, or council leadership, or peer-to-peer um, -peer organizations, person-to-person um, -person organizations are coming together, communities of people coming together to take matters into their own hands because they're seeing that this top-down approach, this hierarchical approach is a fallacy. Okay? So, We've been programmed to think that we are without power to affect change on a global scale. And this is false. People now, groups now, People who feel passionate about something, like a sustainable environment, okay, or products to be created that are sustainable, or recycling, or um, clean water, which should be a right for all people. new ways to recycle trash for the benefit of humanity rather than waste killing our oceans and the our ocean life within it because we haven't taken the time to think that brilliant mind or those brilliant minds that are out there who understand um, infrastructure and system living could take that plastic or that those COVID masks or the gloves or whatever and bottles, plastic bottles and plastic bags and make something else from them that can be absolutely brilliant. Utilize the energy for the benefit of humanity. Small groups are doing this already on all different levels, education, economics, uh, health. As a result of that, they are creating, they're self-organizing around co-creation of culture and knowledge and producing open access and education and movements, free culture movements and
movements that are culturally shifting towards new kinds of democratic and economic participation, helping to create a new sustainable egalitarian future. We need to realize that power lies in the hands of the people. We no, no, no longer live in a top-down hierarchical world. That is part of the past age, Piscean age. The Aquarian age is power to the people. So as a fraternity, as a sisterhood and brotherhood of humanity, as a humanity, what is it I call it? The humanity of man, the unity really of man. We begin with love for all rather than for self, which is why we ask those questions. What are your hopes, your feelings, your desires? What are, what's your vision for your life? Is it simply about yourself or does it include the wider panorama? Okay. Is it about individual interests? If, in fact, we are working with the energies of love, first and foremost, and a will to good for all, that will, that love, can flip the switch and manifest externally in our world. It can flip the switch of me thinking, my thinking, I thinking, us and them thinking, okay? This is the legacy of the incoming age. And I wanted to read a paragraph that I thought was so, so beautifully written. And I take this from the book Creative Thinking by Lucille Cedarcrantz. And it is a quote. I'm not quite sure exactly from where. I haven't found that yet, but I will look into it. If I have love, I cannot hate. If I have love, I see my brother's needs, my brother's need in his act and meet that need in my own act. If my heart knows compassion, it cannot know prejudice. And when my mind knows reason, which is love, it cannot become irrational. Therefore, if I have love, I am a friend and brother to all men. I thought that was an important thing to read. It is impossible for prejudice to live in the same mind and emotional nature that knows and practices love. So, here again, we're really talking about the difference between mental and emotional polarization. When we're polarized emotionally, then love is transactional. Love is about, it's not consistent. It's not unconditional. It's on and off. You're walking on eggshells all the time.
But when love is pure, when love is real, when love is of the mind, then you cannot you cannot have things like prejudice and discrimination you can love from the mind and that mind will understand flaw it will understand and it will interpret pain it will see reaction and the compassion that inner heart is able to sustain that love in spite of. That's that kind of love that is full of mercy and grace. It's un truly unconditional. It's just something to think about. Love cannot be ambivalent. Otherwise, it's for the self and for self-interests to own, to possess, to manipulate or command. Love and life anchored in the emotions is a totally ambivalent kind of love. Okay. Love lived from the emotions is a love that is imprisoned, unable to reason, so being polarized, wherever one is polarized, has two factors to it, the whole aspect, the study of polarization has two factors to it. One is the relationship of polarization with you and the conscious thinking I and our bodies. Okay. Only when we become polarized in the mind will we ever gain control of our emotional and physical being, of our knee-jerk reactions, of our fears, our desires, of our pain, our childhood traumas. Our three lower bodies, or what we call our three lower worlds, our mental, or of the mind, our astral, of the emotions, and our physical and physical etheric, one complete physical and physical etheric, is an instrument of contact. These three lower bodies, this instrument within which we live, it's our instrument of contact and vehicle with which to work in incarnation in this world, ideally for the soul. When we awaken enough to send that signal, communicate to that to our soul, that we are ready to work together with it until that time. This vehicle the instrument of the soul ideally is really 
simply the instrument of the personality. Until we wake up, until we say enough, until we say, is this all there is? And decide to make a change, to do something about it, okay? To live in a totally different way. Most people who live within this instrument, this vehicle, are usually operating strictly from a place of persona or personality. Persona meaning mask, okay? It's an instrument of the personality. But the truth is that our mind is really concerned with meaning and reason and understanding and recognizing or seeing and interpreting that understanding through creative activity, okay? And that our emotions are the power factor of manifestation in truth, meaning they are that vehicle through which we are able to fuel our ideas and concepts that seek to be born in the light of day. We don't know what our emotions are really for. We think they're all about pouting and anger and slaying dragons. And the dragon that needs to be slayed is our own inner dragon. Okay? That's where a power of manifest, the power of emotions becomes powerful. When we say enough, I'm no longer doing this. I'm no longer about that. I'm listening to something else that's calling to my attention to be, live, walk in the world in a different way. Our physical body, through the physical body, We conduct and coordinate these forces. So it's an instrument. It truly is an instrument, which is why it's so important for us to be able to keep it honed. Keep it healthy. Do right by it so that we have the energy, the life force, the vitality to be able to live life on a higher octave. Obviously, the three lower bodies must work together for any level of achievement. And not only that, they must work together. What does that mean? That means that they have to be coordinated. We can't intention one thing over here and our emotional body really wants to do something else over there and our physical body is asking us to do something else over here. That'll never work, okay? <laughs> That's total disharmony. We have to bring them into union, into accord, so that that which the mental is demanding or envisioning, really, envisioning is supported and fueled 
by that power factor of manifestation. The emotions and the physical is in tune with it all so that that new concept and idea that you're bringing it down can be birthed into the light of day in time and space. Okay. It's a wonderful thing when you can really understand these things and put them into motion. It's so exciting. When the consciousness is polarized in the mind or one is polarized in the mind and spiritually focused, that is one who is able to slay their inner dragons. That is one who can be the master, the captain of their ship, okay? And steer that ship over all kinds of waters. That's one who is learning how to master their matter, okay? Their matter. This is our matter, okay? To be in control of their fate, their emotional and physical bodies, and mental. So, There's a statement that I always bring to mind at different times um, that I think is extremely powerful. I think I've passed it on to you before, but I'm gonna use it again because we're gonna be talking about being passive and active or uh, negative and positive, like a battery, okay? Not good or bad, negative and positive. Okay, like a, like a battery. We are unaware of how passive we are to our environment and how, those, how, that, how the forces that impact us from outside of us have us constantly wheeling to and fro. Those people, those, those of you, I used to be one myself until recently, who spend a lot of time looking at the news and listening to being being bombarded by this constant negative slant spin, really spin, are doing themselves an injustice because that is impacting you mentally, emotionally, and causing deleterious effects to your etheric vehicle because it it imprisons you okay much of our decisions our actions our thoughts and reactions are a result of our environment they're not our own thoughts and willpower we are so bombarded whether it's being the advertising agencies be it magazine radio tv social media much of our decisions actions and thoughts and reactions are a result of our environment that's why advertising <laughs> news broadcasts work so well. We simply give voice to that which is impacting us. It's not like we are thinking on our own at all. And this plays out in our interactions with each other. Okay, perfect example. School hallway, high school, middle school, elementary pretty much. An interaction with one person that you really may like, 
but others may consider to be an outcast will be dependent on who's around, not because of what you want to do, but you give up your power. We give up our, and this happens to adults as well. We give up our power because of what's happening in our environment rather than what we really want to do. When you find and you begin to work in the world as one who is not impacted by who's around you, that you can be the same with X, Y, and Z around you as you are when A, B, C, and D is around you, then you have a coherent, consistent being, okay? You have somebody who is authentic, real, honest, sincere, holding integrity, One who's positively polarized, which means causative, okay, or mentally polarized, causative to their environment, controls their environment, their actions, intentionally radiating purpose outward. And affecting the environment as a result of that. These people become leaders within the group. Because of that level of authenticity, consistency, earnestness, inability to be tossed to and fro. By the impacts of people around them or situations around them. This type of focus being mentally polarized. They're not emotionally polarized. They're mentally polarized. They're willful. They're causative. Okay. Um, that's what it means to be positively identified. And we call this person, I'm just going to say, this is a person who is one who is in tune with the energies and the divine plan. It's the adult person of God, which we have to. I hope this is something it imparted to you that you can work with to begin to think about where you are, where you hang out, where are you inconsistent. Take a strong, honest look, especially as we do and continue with those meditations um, that I gave you uh, two months ago and the evening meditation of going up the mountain and um, the other meditation as well. Um, new meditations to come in the upcoming future. But right now we still need to work on this and hopefully you're journaling as requested for your own benefit, for no one else, you know, and realize that, that as we do it, as one does this, I quote unquote, for one's own benefit, you're setting a pattern in the frequency and the of humanity. You're setting a pattern in the mind of humanity that will teach others how to follow that same pattern. Okay? We, ne we never do anything in and of ourselves alone. We're always affecting change. This is positively impacting humanity. Okay? Because you set that pattern in the 
fabric of humanity and humanity will be able to pick up that morphogenetic field. Okay. We're going to do a meditation now. Let's take a moment and focus inward as a group. Know that there are people who are working together with you at this very moment in meditation, either the very same or similar, so that you are not doing this alone, you are doing this as a group, a soul group. Take a deep breath. And as you release it, relax the physical body. Have an overwhelming sense of peace and well being moving through your body. Allow the breath to find its own natural rhythm. Take another deep breath. And releasing it, relax your emotions. Directing them to be at peace. Take a third deep breath. And as you release it, become mentally awake, alert, and focused on this activity. Move your awareness as a group two to three inches outside or beyond the forehead into the etheric body. Connect, linking up with the wider world group, the group of world servers who work on behalf of humanity and sound a silent own. As a group, move back into the center of the head.
about two inches behind the eyes. Into the group, heart of mind. Also known as the cave. A place of magnetic frequency in the center of the head. And identify as soul. I am the soul. I am the light divine. I am love. I am will. I am fixed design. and hold the awareness of the group soul. As you also become aware of a line of light moving vertically upward beyond the top of the head and outside of the top of the head. And another line of light that moves horizontally from that magnetic field known as the cave or the heart of mind straight out to that etheric center where you connected with the group world group connecting with what is known as the Ajna Center. Remaining in that cave, in the center of the head. No, you stand. In alignment with the overshadowing soul. And with the planetary hierarchy. No. You stand negative to spirit and positive to matter. Meaning you stand receptive to spirit and causative to matter. Here you are causative to the mental, emotional, and physical planes, your three lower worlds. And standing in this place in the cave with the group as soul, 
focus on the seed thought as you connect with the highest point of divine energy possible through that vertical line of light yet remaining in the cave I will to do thy will listen for the frequency of that seed thought listen to its tone its sound and follow that sound. Allow that sound to be the guiding light, so to speak, of this meditation. Allow the words to disappear and remain only with the sound. and allow the frequency of this note from this seed thought to fill the cave in the center of the head. And as the cave begins to fill with the weight of the sea thought, the energies of the sea thought, Take a moment and try to form a sentence or phrase from the returning energies of this seed thought. Try to interpret what it has sent to you.
intention to remember that phrase or sentence. Intention to recall it with complete clarity. And take one moment and ask the question, what is my true purpose? Ask inwardly, not vocally. And listen for the answer. in stillness. It can come immediately. It can come after we close the meditation. It may come in a day or two but stay open for that answer that seems to drop out of nowhere. It doesn't come from your mind. As a mental thought. Take a moment and ask this last question. What is my most meaningful goal at this time? Again, make a mental decision to remember the answers to these questions. Move your awareness, your consciousness now from the cave as a group back out to the etheric body, two to three inches beyond the forehead, the place of the Ajna center. And sound together, 
a silent om. Oh. Oh. And send this energy through that Ajna center out to humanity. Projecting it outward. Take a moment and give thanks to each other as a group. Allowing the energies to begin to dissipate around your auric field or from your auric field outward into the environment. Take a deep breath. Relaxing the attention and returning to normal focus. Let's take a moment before we end to end on a very high note as this was a hopefully a strong meditation. It felt very strong to me, especially under the energies of this full moon. And I'd like to end with the Mantram of the Disciple. I am a point of light within a greater light. I am a strand of loving energy within the stream of love divine. I am a point of sacrificial fire focused within the fiery will of God, and thus I stand. I am a way of light. I am a way by which men may achieve. I am a source of strength enabling them to stand. I am a beam of light shining upon their way, and thus I stand. And standing thus revolve and turn this way, the way of men. Yet know the way of God, the ways of God. And thus, I stand. I send love to all of you. May the light, love and power of the energies, the very powerful energies that are pouring through to earth at this time. Affect positive change in all of your lives. 
so may it be in divine law and order. I thank you for your time, your energy. I thank the Institute for Global Transformation for allowing me to present these meditations on a monthly basis. Our hearts are one, so may it be.